These are the final standings of the Tata Steel Tournament 2021. So you can see three players on eight points. Firuzja, Caruana and Yesipenko. Yesipenko, only 18 years old, had a fantastic tournament. He won in the last round against Donchenko. And then in first place, we had Jordan van Forest against Anish Giri. If you want to know how the players all landed on those positions, then do check out my other video, um, Van Forest against Grandelius. But I'd like to look at a game from the playoff between Van Forest and Giri. And this was the first Blitz game. So they were scheduled to play two Blitz games, five minutes each and three seconds each time they made a move. And in this first game, it was pretty clear that, well, von Forest was in the swing of things. He was moving much more fluently than Geary. He was ahead on the clock. And although Geary actually has negotiated the opening very well, time was always an issue in this, in this game. Nevertheless, let's have a look at what happens because there are some beautiful, beautiful tactics I'd like to show you. So here... Well, it's clear that the opening has gone very well for Geary. He has black. You can see his. it's about pawn structure, basically. His pawn structure is looking really good. Whereas white's here, well, those really ugly split pawns on the queen side. The one good piece that uh, Van Forest has is that bishop on a2, which, well, you could hope that perhaps... There's some kind of attack later on on f7. But this is a struggle. This is a lot of fun for black to play in a blitz game because you have no weaknesses in your position, basically. And here, Giri played very directly. He played an excellent move, rook g5. And you can see there just aren't any defenders around the king. This is a huge problem for white. Queen is way across the other side of the board, dare I say it, in Siberia. Um, the threat is obvious, bishop h3. Well, let, let's try an obvious defense. Um, let's, let's try king h1 to step out of that. Problem is bishop h3 works in this position as well. Um, if pawn takes bishop, then queen f3 is mate. And if rook g1, you can take... And that's the problem. The queen can take the rook and mate follows. So king h1 is unsatisfactory and white is struggling here. Let me show you another defense. That again, I'm showing you, I'm going to detail in this position because there are some beautiful tactics. So let's try g3. Well, bishop h3 again, rook e1. Now, you might think that queen f3 is winning, but there's a nice defense Queen e4, preventing queen g2. But there is a win for black in this position, a really elegant solution. Can you spot it? Rook e5, very simple move. So if rook takes rook, once again, queen takes rook, and that's mate. So black's threat is to take the rook on e1, and if the rook steps aside, then queen f3 is winning because white no longer has the defense of queen e4, and it's going to be mate. So you can see white has problems here. Van Forest invested, well, it says 22 seconds here, and played rook e1. And here, Giri played a good move. He played the natural move, uh, but there was a stronger move. What should... Black play here in this position. Black has a winning move here. Now, unfortunately for Giri, no one was tapping him on the shoulder to let him know that this was the critical position. This is the problem. If you know there's a good move here, then you might find it. So you have a little think. I'll have a little slurp. Giri played bishop h3. It's a good move. But the best move is rook g4. And this just pushes the queen to a very unfortunate square. 
Well, if the queen's in Siberia on a4, then when it moves to a7, well, it's it's basically yeah go, gone gone um, beyond Siberia into the Arctic Circle, and it's just nowhere now. Um, here, black wins with this one. Check and queen f3, and well, the queen unfortunately here can't swing across to the king side, so. It's going to be mate shortly. Now, white does have a better defence, and that is f4. But you can still still see that the queen is unfortunately placed. And here, well, the king position has opened up. Queen f3. Just to repeat, this did not happen, but I find it a very, very instructive position. So here you can break through with rook takes. So black's a rook down, but the king doesn't have any cover. If king f1, then you can drive the king out into the open, and this is actually winning for black, um, queen takes, and so on. So the king has to go in the corner. So what's next? We'll move the bishop in, threatening check. Now, white does have a desperate defence here, and that's bishop takes. Um, if rook takes, then that's a nice counter-attack, and if king takes, then you can exchange queens, and that saves white. Um, so after bishop takes, the king goes in the corner. Now, the only way to stop this successfully is to play rook f1. Bishop f3... Now the king's exposed. Um, it's still not easy to finish off here, actually. But I, I think the best way, or perhaps the simplest way, is to play like this. Queen f5. It's a, there's a very cute idea here. Of course, this this is computer analysis. I, I'm certainly not expecting that anyone would spot this in in a blitz game, let alone, well, it, perhaps not even in a classical game. Um, but I, I really like this idea. It's a beautiful idea. So we want to take the bishop, and then black is a, a pawn up. If bishop b3, here's the cute tactic. Queen e5, threatening that rook. Again, that loose rook on a1. And also threatening rook takes pawn. Check, winning the queen. Great idea. So in this position, white would just have to play rook e1 and give up the bishop. I think that should be winning for black. Pawn up. White has split pawns. Not very pleasant. The king is exposed. It must be winning for black. Right. Where was I? Uh, yes, back here. I've gone into enormous detail. So that was not bishop h3. That was rook g4, which I think should give black a winning position. Like I said, I'm certainly not expecting Giri to see all that in a blitz game, it would be unreasonable to expect that. But I just thought the tactics were beautiful, actually, and, and somehow very instructive. Bishop h3 played, and this comes so close to winning as well. So once again, if g3, then that rook e5 move is winning. F uh, von Forest finds an incredible defence here. Queen f4. Giving up the g2 pawn. Now, black has to be careful here uh, because not only is white threatening the rook, but also queen takes pawn, followed by rook e8 mate. So watch out. And, and here, this is so tricky. This is incredibly tricky. And Geary did brilliantly here to find the only move that keeps black in the game and actually gives black the advantage. So, this is still a threat. Queen takes and rook e8 mate. And if you play h6, then, which I mean, you'd think this should be winning for black. Queen e3 turns the tables completely. And here, white threatens the bishop. And of course, if the bishop moves, you take the rook. Incredible. So, what should. Black play in this position. Geary found the only move. G5. Brilliant move. Absolutely brilliant. So obviously, 
This no longer works because after rook e8, the king has an escape square on g7. And after queen e3, black goes into the endgame and in this case can defend the bishop with g4. And here, well, white has pretty good drawing chances if the rooks are exchanged. You can't take here because of rook takes bishop. There's a, there's a pin, pin and win. Um, so black would have to exchange and, well, white has decent drawing chances. Instead, Van Forest played f3. There were more twists and turns in this game. And here, well, very quickly, Giri decided to support the pawn on g4 with h5. He could have played instead g3. So it's a beautiful move. Obviously threatening to take here. And if pawn takes pawn, here's the idea. Rook d8. Black has control over the second rank. And once the rook comes to d2, then it forces mate. So if rook, for example, rook g1, now because there's a pawn on g3, there's no pin. This is incredible. So rook f2, threat, rook d2, and mate. And if rook d3, you can just sidestep, and the rook comes down. And mate in a few moves. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But h5 played and Van Forest seized his chance. Rook g1, excellent move. Forcing an exchange of rooks because the bishop is hanging. And here, basically, well, it comes back to the pressure on f7. Finally, that bishop on b3 comes good. And there's enough pressure here. And white can make a draw. And, well, after these moves, I mean, Giri is trying very hard, um, trying to keep hold of that extra pawn, but it's no good. There really was no way out of this. And, well, after these, everything was liquidated in this position. They ended up with king against king. So the first blitz game was, blitz game was drawn. The second blitz game, Geary had some advantage, but it was very slim and he couldn't make anything of it. That was also a draw. So they went into an Armageddon. Now, I have to say, I think for such a prestigious tournament, I think to decide a winner on an Armageddon game is very unfortunate. And I think the organisers could do better. You might moan about blitz games, but, well, I think there is certainly more content to them. So they, I think they could have played another couple of Blitz games and, you know, eventually they're going to find a winner. Um, the Armageddon game was just chaotic. Blunders all over the place. First, Giri had a great position, then it swung round. Von Forest was winning. And, well, Giri was in a must-win situation playing white and eventually, well, his time ran out. He made a blunder and... Well, Giri actually resigned before he lost on time um, with Van Forest in a winning position. But, I mean, this is all kind of academic, really. It was madness. It really was. Anyway, at the end of it, Jordan Van Forest was declared the winner of Tata Steel 2021. And uh, I certainly don't begrudge him that. I mean, you know, he thoroughly deserved incredible result for the 21-year-old. He comes from a chess-playing dynasty, not even a chess-playing family. Um, he's, yeah, he, he's, he has a brother, Lucas, who's uh, a grandmaster as well. I think his father is a decent player. He has a sister who's also uh, a very strong player. But actually, when I say dynasty, his great-great-grandfather was a three-time Dutch champion, as was his great-great-uncle, another uh, three-time Dutch champion. So it really is a dynasty. And, well, he has a great future ahead of him. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pleased for him, actually. As for Anish, well, he tied first. He won't be too unhappy with the result. And I'm sure that will give him confidence going into the candidates tournament, which has been announced for uh, 
well, I believe the end of April. Thanks very much for watching. I've really loved the Tata Steel Tournament. I think it's a great event. If the organisers just tweak the um, tiebreak situation at the end, then I think it'll be an even better tournament. For me, it's, it's my favourite tournament of the year because they always invite an interesting field. And I think it certainly paid off this year with the winner, 21-year-old, and uh, Jesse Penko, an 18-year-old, who's also done very well indeed. Magnus Carlsen, well, he, lost, he won his final game but he called his performance shameful maybe he should play a little bit more classical chess instead of uh, online blitz but there you go thanks for watching